character. Let's let's switch gears here. You then basically started doing stunts from in 1963 all the way till now. You've worked in probably a thousand pictures. Where did you get 63? Well, that's what it said on your IMDb page. There was some uncredited stuff back then, and probably weren't credited to like 67. Well, Did you start even earlier? You're given uh, bad information now. Well, let's straighten. And let's straighten the record out. What I've got there, I'll burn your house down. All right. You know, my doctor had me on matches this year. Uh, I was on Velcro before, and I couldn't do anything to the guy. But now I'm on matches. I got my Screen Actors Guild card. In 1955, oh, wow. and in 1960, they started residuals. In other words, you worked and you got uh, paid again. And uh, that's always nice. Yeah, if you get to work, you're going to be rich, and uh, it's great to be rich. But I don't know. You kind of ugly. I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm not only rich, but I'm good looking. Are you good looking? I'm not. I'm not Don't ask your mother. I'm not quite as quite as lucky. We've worked in so many movies and TV shows. We actually fought Elvis Presley in some of his movies. Little fight scenes, correct? Oh yeah, Blue Hawaii. And tell you a little story about uh, Elvis. Great guy. Uh, I had no money then. I wasn't rich like you. You know. And so he gave me a hundred dollar bill. He used to hand them out like they were popcorn. And I says, my God, a hundred dollar bill. Uh, you know, I can drive to Chicago with that and have change coming back. Anyway, I went out and I had the biggest steak I could have. Philly mignon with salad, baked potato, strawberry shortcake, six dollars. <laughs> and I had money, I was paying in a beautiful house, $45 a month rent. Oh so uh, anyway, if I wasn't dumb and I was smart like you people, I would have saved that $100 bill, go without eating, and I could have had that $100 bill now and have him sign it, and it'd be worth maybe $100,000. Oh and that was basically a $100 bill. Now Elvis was big into Karate, Ed Parker's Ken Po Karate. Very big. Did you guys ever talk uh, martial arts talk back and forth or oh, train yeah. at all? No, he never got a train. We worked out a little bit, a few things on the on uh, the set. But Ed Parker was a, a great uh, martial artist in his own right. He made uh, Ken Po Karate popular. He had a few schools. And uh, he's the one that... Uh, got me into that Milo Savage fight because they wrote an article in this road magazine and he came over to my school and he says they offered a thousand dollars to anybody that could beat their boxer and uh, I says well why not one of the Kempo guys he says well we had a meeting with 200 of our black belts and they wanted somebody that could go against the boxer that they thought would do well and so they voted for me. And I said, why me? And he says, Ed told me this. He said, an honest man. He said, you're the most sadistic bastard I've ever met. <laughs> and that's what started. That changed my life a little bit. That, that changed a lot of things. That was the first grappling versus striking matchup that you know kind of started the yeah, MMA thing. I had those all my life, but not for money. I'd go to the wrestling gym and the wrestler beat me up a little bit when I was a young kid. Hit him with a left hook, he'd go down and I got kicked out of the gym. So I go to the boxing gym, guy hits me with a couple uppercuts, <laughs> a, a hook and a jab and then I can't beat him boxing, pick him up, body slam him, lay the boots to him and uh, I got kicked out of that gym too. For being it's, the original mixed martial artist, pretty much. It's a learning process. But don't do like I did. I expect you people to be a lot smarter. But I had a room temperature IQ. Speaking of some of the famous people you worked with, what about Bruce Lee? You worked with him a number of times on sets doing stunts. And then you guys trained together and you taught him some grappling. Yeah, Bruce Lee uh, worked with me uh, a year. 
and uh, he would have worked longer, but he was on different movies, and uh, I was on his, um, he did a documentary on Bruce Lee, and it was very well done by a producer from Canada, and uh, Bruce Lee uh, taught me a lot of spinning kicks that I was skinny, I looked like a polio victim, I was so skinny, and helped me with show business. And I taught him uh, judo throws, arm bars, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I always wonder this, the sketch of all the submissions that is in the Tao Ji Kundo, I have, I have a poster on my wall with, with all these great you know, catch wrestling style submission holes. Was that actually something he traced from your sketches of these, he these might have, ranks and, and, and figure four face holds and he, locks? And he, he did a thing called the Enter the Dragon, a movie. Chuck Norris, Bob Wall were in it. And uh, it was a classic. And still, uh, Enter the Dragon is a classic. He says, you come for Hong Kong and you... Uh, work on a movie with me, Enter the Dragon. I says, Bruce, you don't know it, but the dragons died of old age maybe three or four years ago. And he says, Bakatori Hakajin. That's Japanese for, he was Chinese. And he, um, he said, uh, no, I'm the dragon. And that's what he was known as the Little Dragon. Great athlete and a great human being, terrific human being, but uh, he wanted to pay me $200 a week. And I said, are you crazy? Uh, I get 1000 a week uh, here, and that's when 1000 a week, now the stunt guys get, you know, 10 times that. Uh, but that was big money then. And I said, go there and eat, uh, go to China and in the soup they've got things that are crawling around and man if it isn't hot, boiling hot, that slows these little crawling things down a bit and then you can eat them, you know. Well yeah, your grappling influence on him I think can be seen in the opening scene of Enter the Dragon which, you know, he's going um, against Samuel Young, he's got the JKD Kenpo fingerless gloves on. It kind of was MMA again before before its time in the opening scene, and he finished with, with a submission hold. He did a straight arm bar, like it's, that's very popular in judo. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ronda Rousey, who works out here and other places too, uh, Ronda Rousey is terrific, by far the best Absolutely. woman fighter of all time. And she's Queen had, Armors. She's had nine fights. Three amateurs, six pros, they all ended up with an arm bar. And that's what Bruce Lee did in the movie. He says, I want to show you what I did. Everybody claims, I, I'm in her corner when she fights. Uh, everybody claims to be a teacher of hers. Well, her main teacher was her mother, who was a 1984 world judo champion. Anna Marie, uh, is her name. Yeah, I did a nice interview with her last month. Oh, and, right she's, after one. and she's in my new book. And uh, a great, great athlete in her own right. And she comes here and teaches the class once in a while. Uh, so they say, uh, Jean, I understand you teach her. And I says, I don't teach her like everybody else. I have three words that I say. Only three. And she learned from him because she's had nine matches, nine three amateurs, six pros, all with a arm bar. So my instruction for her, three words, break a arm. <laughs> and she's done it. <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> over a minute and over each again. usually. She's got other techniques that she does, but she tries to make Uncle Gene happy because I get fit of impression <laughs> if they don't do what I say.